morning at EI Ministry. Man, it is good to be here this morning as we prepare for our fifth Sunday, our reset Sunday. Man, God has a word for you today as we get ready and get prepared for what thus says the Lord. Hey, man, a few admin notes as we go ahead and we get them out of the way before we go ahead and we break the bread of life this morning. As you well aware that we will be back in the sanctuary on the first Sunday in November for in-person service. That we pray that you guys will come out and engage as we get ready and we fulfill the move of God that he has for our life. We just want you guys to come out and enjoy yourself because we just want to make sure we have a great expectation that God is going to move on that Sunday and we expect you guys to come out and enjoy it yourself. But not only that, also we know that on the second Sunday in the month of November, we'll be doing a actual uh, Thanksgiving giveaway. And that's also the opportunity that you guys need to come out and get your actual ham or your turkey. Amen. So we just pray that you guys will come out in person and get those things so we can go ahead and give out to those who are in need. With that being said, um, how many of you feel like right now in the actual atmosphere, you just can't seem to get an upper hand to what you're trying to do and things are compiling on you over and over and over again. I just feel the need of God giving me a word for you this morning to help you out this morning. So on this reset Sunday, we're going to go ahead and break the bread of life. But we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. And as we get through fulfilling our, our actual uh, obligations of praying over the bread of life, then we're going to go ahead and go into the bread of life and see what thus says the Lord. Amen. So join me in a word of prayer for those who are visiting and for those EI members, family uh, that are out there. I just want you to go ahead and please share this actual link right now. Share it and let someone know that, hey, we're live right now. So you can get this actual word that God has for you. Oh, great and mighty God, we come to you right now, Father. We thank you, God, for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for this platform. God, we just thank you, God, for us not counting it robbery or not being sitting here, God, and, and not coming in and being able to get this virtual experience, God. God, now we as we tap into your actual spiritual anointing, God, allow me to decrease and allow me to increase in your Holy Spirit that will guide and will teach me and allow me to feed your people this morning, God. God, not only that, God, we pray for those who are less fortunate, who are going through tough times, dealing with struggles, dealing with trials, dealing with tribulations. God, we pray that you give them strength as they endure through those things because we know that there is a crown of righteousness, a great reward in the end. So, God, you don't take us through anything and allow us to go through anything without you being present, God. You're always there with us, God. For your word said you'll never leave nor forsake us, Father. So, God, now as we go ahead and embark into the mystery of the faith and allow your divine revelation to be a part of our actual teaching today, God. We allow that, God, that this word edify your people. Allow the word of God to equip them, to empower them so it can be an impact to them. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, amen, amen this morning, E-I. So, if you have your Bibles today, we're going to go to the oldest book in the Bible. And that is not the book of Genesis, nor the book of Revelation. It is the book of Job, amen. And so, the book of Job will be coming from Job, the first chapter the 13th to the 22nd verse. I will be reading the New Living Translation version. And as the scripture comes up, the reading of God's word goes as written. One day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing with the donkeys, feeding beside them. When the Salbeans raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farm hands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still talking, Another messenger arrived with his news. 
with this news. The fire of God had fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with this news. Three bands of Chaldeans, raiders, have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Job stood up, tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. If I could go ahead and take those set of scriptures this morning on this Reset Sunday and speak you from a topic, it would be, I can't seem to catch a break. I can't seem to catch a break. The New York Times reported that internal documents that showed that Amazon sequentially discovered it was shortchanging some employees who were on leave, including medical and disability leave, and that this problem spanned at least a year and a half ago and it potentially affect as many as 179 warehouses. An Amazon spokesman told the New York Times that the company was still in the process of identifying workers it had underpaid. Tara Jones, who was one of those workers from Oklahoma, emailed the then Jeff Bezos, who was the CEO in 2020, to tell him that she was being underpaid $90 out of $540 she was supposed to get a month. Mrs. Jones stated that she had a newborn baby and she had fallen behind on paying her bills, all because the pay system at Amazon messed up her paycheck. James Watts, who was another warehouse worker from Tennessee, told the Times that his disability payments stopped for several months in the spring. And during that period of his life, his car was repossessed and he and his wife sold their wedding rings to try to make ends meet. And church this morning, even when we're doing the best that we can, life has the tendency to still land us in a place where we are still coming up short and it seems like we just can't catch a break. And psychologist Abraham Mossel, who is known for creating a pyramid that represents the hierarchy of human basic needs, stated that if you had food, shelter, 
employment, security, resources, connection, and belonging, that you would be able to make it to the top if these basic essentials were taken care of first. But unfortunately, many of us are stuck at the bottom right now due to the current pandemic that we're in that has threatened our health, our safety, our economy, even our shelter, and has placed a strain on nurturing our relationships. And there is no magic cure for what aids us today. However, I do have a phrase that I believe that will help reframe what some of us may be going through so that we can move forward from feeling less defeated and more empowered. Because whatever you are feeling is not your facts. It's just an emotion. Let, let me say that again. Whatever you may be feeling and going through right now is not your facts. It is just an emotion. Meaning just because you feel defeated does not mean that you are defeated. Because bad things happen all the time in our life. But it's how we accept them and move forward to them, church, that makes the difference in how they impact our lives. And we can either let our hardships destroy us or we can allow them to be teachers to us. Because when it seems like you can't catch a break in this season, tell yourself that God is trying to make you stronger. Lord have mercy. And when it seems like things ain't going right for you, when it seems like you just can't seem to get any type of help or assistance, Realize that God is trying to make you stronger in this season. Because every time you go through something hard, you come out much wiser and much stronger. Y'all ain't hearing me. Every time you face a roadblock, you become more diverse and more creative. Because in order to live your best life this morning, Living well is your best revenge. Lord have mercy. In order for you to live your best life, you have to learn how to live well so that it can be your best revenge. And sometimes God has to force us to step up our game when we're being played by a game. Y'all ain't hearing me here. Sometimes God got to make some things happen in our life to stir us up so that we can step up our game when we're being played by the game. Let me see if I can help you out here. Maybe your life story may feel out of control right now. And it feels like you are not good enough. Or you're never amount to anything. Or that you never have someone special in your life. But watch this. The issue with all of that is this. You get to write the stories you tell yourself. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You get to write the stories that you tell yourself. See, you get to make up and believe whatever you want to believe. Y'all don't hear me here. You get to add and remove any person that is not playing their part well in your life. You better hear me here. And the issue that some of us may be having is that we don't write well at all. Come on, somebody. Because until you erase certain people and the roles that they are playing in your life, you will never catch the break that you have been waiting on because you haven't written your story to shift your own narrative. Lord have mercy. You haven't wrote your own story and you're taking in all the stuff that other people are giving you and you have the ability 
to accept what you want to accept and change what you don't want in your life. Come on, somebody. And in this text today, we have a man by the name of Job who when his life took a massive hit, he never wavered in his faith. He continued to trust God. And the first thing, church, that we need to be reminded of when it seems as though we can't catch a break is that here it is. Whatever is permitted serves a purpose. Lord have mercy. Whatever is permitted, it serves a purpose. See, there is a quote that says, he who is all wrapped up in himself makes a very small package. Lord have mercy. Meaning, we were not made for ourselves, but we were made for the purpose that God created us for. And Job had a wonderful life going, but his life was really small compared to the purpose that God was about to fit him into. Lord have mercy, I'm going somewhere. Because once Satan challenged and questions God's integrity by suggesting that Job was being bribed to love him, God's purpose for Job's life was to use him to fulfill his purpose to prove that Satan was wrong. Meaning, if you find yourself in this season losing ground and going through the same stuff over and over again with different people, you may not have found God's purpose for your life yet. Because people with purpose do things not just to be doing things, but the reason why they're doing them has a specific reason that possess meaning and great intentions. Because God's purpose for Job allowed him to move forward and allow for certain things, even though his life had fallen apart in certain areas. Y'all ain't got it yet. Let me see if I can help you out. Just because you're losing some things right now in your life, it's a great sign that God's purpose for your life is making room for you. Lord have mercy. Because he's trying to make room for some of the new things to take over some of the old stuff that you have. Come on. Because what was standing in your way may have been the very thing that was hindering you from receiving your devil portion in this season. Lord have mercy. See, your breakup was a double portion set up in this season. I'm talking to someone. Yo, that repo was your introduction to purchase a new automobile in this season. Come on. Your, your foreclosure was access for you to gain more storage space in your new home in this season. Come on. See, your purpose is far greater than you. Come on, somebody. But it may require you to lose some things to reach and to receive what God has in store for you. Because the Bible tells us that when much is given, much is required. And you never thought that you would be able to dress any better after God gave you a divine makeover. Come on, somebody. You never thought that you could live any better after God shut certain doors in your life. Come on. You probably never thought that your life could get any better when certain people walk out of your life. Come on. But wow, but what you fail to see is that you never lost when fulfilling God's purpose. You only started living the way God expected you to live after the things that has been stopping you has fallen apart. Lord have mercy. That's what happened. Things that started falling apart in your life. And that's what has happened. Because Everything that happened to you served a purpose, and God's purpose is far bigger than what we can imagine. And you may have lost a few things in this season along the way, 
But compared to what you lost in this season, to what is waiting for you, it will be well worth your while. Lord have mercy. Because God's purpose has to fulfill its actual destiny in your life. So just because things are falling apart in your life right now, just because things are not looking good for you in this season, it doesn't mean that God is not operating for you. It means that God is setting you up for what is about to come next in your life. But not only does God's purpose is bigger than what we can imagine, but number two, here it is, here it is. Always keep praising and worshiping God. Lord have mercy. Always keep praising and worshiping God. You see it in verse 20 and 21. It says that Job fell to the ground to worship God and said that he praised the name of the Lord. Watch this. Job proved faithful despite the loss of his property and the tragic death of his children. Because after such a great devastation, many people would do exactly what Satan was tempting Job to do. Let me explain. They would have questioned God and cursed his name, but Job did not do either. He remained faithful to the Lord and even praise and worship God after losing all that he had. Y'all ain't hearing me here this morning. Watch this. See, God knew that Job praise and worship was not based on materialistic things. Lord have mercy. He knew that it was based off of him having a general, a genuine relationship with him. Y'all ain't hearing me here this morning. And oftentimes when people can't catch a break, it is really about God revealing the authenticity of their relationship that they have with him. Because a faith that has never been tested is a faith that can never be trusted. Y'all ain't hearing me here. And God was not picking on Job just to be picking on him. He chose Job because it was time for him to be put on display with what he had placed inside of him. Lord have mercy. And God told me to tell you that what you may be going through right now in this season is a faith test. Lord have mercy. And it's a faith test to be able to bring out what he had placed in you. But it wasn't based off of your timing. But it was all set up for his timing, y'all ain't hearing me here. And God told me, if you can keep praising him and worshiping him for a little while longer, Lord have mercy, you will see that it is really worth your while in this season, y'all ain't hearing me here. God says, you gotta keep praising me, you gotta keep worshiping me for a little while longer to push through the stuff that's trying to hold you back to push through the stuff that is very difficult because it seems like you just can't seem to catch a break in this season. God says, I understand that you've been trying your best, but just hold on for a little while longer and keep pressing through and keep pushing through and praising and worshiping me. He says, I promise you I'll show up when you really need me. Lord have mercy. So how can we praise and worship God even when our life is in ruins. How can we praise and worship God even when our life is falling apart? Here is your takeaway right here, EEI. Here's your three takeaway. The first thing you need to understand is this. Always look for the victory, Lord have mercy. Always look for the victory. See, you will never lose when you include God in what you're going through because God has never lost a battle. Lord have mercy. This is why you got to always look for the victory and you can always find the victory 
in the moment that you feel that you have become a victim. Lord have mercy. When you feel as though that you become a victim and nothing is going right for you, this is when you start looking for the victory. Because God will always bring you out of stuff that you can't bring yourself out of. Lord have mercy. God will always take you through stuff that you can't carry yourself through. Lord have mercy. Always look for the victory when you feel as though you're about to become a victim. Lord have mercy. The next thing you need to understand that you can praise and worship God when things are falling apart all in your life is that whatever you're going through doesn't define you. Lord have mercy. Whatever you're going through, it doesn't define you. See, our lives are not defined by our financial decisions, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Because we are more than that to God. We're more than that. Our life is defined by us getting up after we have fallen down. Lord have mercy. Our life is defined by being able to get up after we have fallen down. Because the Bible tells us, for the righteous fall seven times, and he rises again. Meaning, you can't get to your truth. You can't get to your break until you have risen from your fall. Lord, have mercy. You can't get to what you've been looking for in this season until you get up and rise from what was taking you down. And God says, this is the season that you need to rise again. Come on. Because you've been allowing yourself to be a victim and stuff. And you weren't looking for the victory. And you've been allowing your situation to define who you are. So you have to rise again, E.I. -E you have to be able to keep pushing through. But thirdly, here it is. You have to realize that there is always a reason to be thankful. Lord have mercy. There's always a reason to be thankful. See, regardless of what you may be dealing with right now, know that your short episode is someone else's day-to-day -day reality. Lord have mercy. That that short episode that you're going through is somebody else's day-to-day -day reality because we know that this too shall pass. Come on, somebody. And you may hate your job, but someone else may not even have a job. Lord have mercy. You may hate where you stay at, but there is someone who may be homeless and don't have a place to stay. Come on, somebody. See, our worst could be somebody else's best. Lord have mercy. And you're wondering why you think you can't get a break. When the reality is that they're looking for a break. And this is why the Bible says that we ought to give thanks in all circumstances. Because the happiest people don't have the best of everything. They make the best of everything. This is what you have to understand when you're trying to seem like though that you can't catch a break. These are the things you have to go ahead and apply to your life. You have to look at those things. You have to always look for the victory. You have to know that those things don't define you in this season that you're going through. And you have to realize there's always a reason to be thankful regardless of what your situation is. But as I get out of here, let me close with this. Catching your break could all be wrapped up in your attitude. Lord, let me, let me say that again. Catching your break could all be wrapped up in your attitude. Look at verse 22. It makes it clear. It says, in all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Lord, have mercy. It says, by all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Because Job had to know 
that even if God did not create his situation, he knew that God could change his situation. Y'all ain't hear me here. And when everything seems like falling apart, that is falling apart in your life, this is when God is putting things together just the way he wanted them to be. Y'all ain't hear me. Meaning your life was not falling apart when you lost certain people in your life. Come on. Your life was not falling apart when certain events did not turn out the way you wanted them to turn out with certain individuals. What was happening was God was only putting your life into proper order, Lord have mercy, so that he could get what he had already planned for your life. That's what he was doing. God was putting your life in the proper order so that he could get from you what he had planned for your life. Because in order to get to God's peace, it will require your life to look like it has no type of order. Oh, I think I said something. In order for you to get to God's peace, your life has to look like it has no type of order. Lord have mercy. Because God is not a God of confusion, but he is a God of peace and order. Meaning when you lose control of your life, it allows God to step in and take control over what was never yours in the first place. Come on. See, some of you think that this is your life, but it's not your life. You have a greater purpose. And when you lose control of what's going on in your life, the reason why you're going through the trials, the reason why you're going through the tribulation, when, you, when things are spurred out of control, this is when God steps in and takes total control. And God told me that the break that you have been expecting will only occur after you have been broken and you start beginning to lose some things, Lord have mercy. He says that the break that has been avoiding you will only show up when you stop complaining about not having certain things, Lord have mercy. He says that the break that you have been expecting will only appear in your life when everything has been wiped out and you can still praise him after being wiped out, Lord have mercy. Because God always had everything under control. He just needed to test you to see if you would still trust and believe in him, that he was still in control. That's what God told me to tell you today. See, Job trusting God, as I get out of here, Job trusting God gave him a break. Y'all ain't here, here. Job trusting God gave him the biggest break of his life. A break that he never expected to occur because the Bible tells us in, 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 in Job the 42nd chapter and the 10th verse that God restored not only what Job lost but he gave him a double portion of what he lost watch this when he prayed for his friends y'all ain't hear me somebody you missed your blessing don't miss this as I get out of here please don't miss this here it is your blessing the break that has been avoiding you and that you've been looking for in this season is probably wrapped up in your attitude, Lord have mercy. The blessing that you've been looking for, the break that you've been looking for, God has wrapped it up all in your attitude because Job did not blame God for anything. He didn't have an attitude with his friends who accused him of doing something wrong. Job prayed for them and God gave him a double portion. And God told me that your attitude in this season will play a major role in you catching a break and receiving what he has stored up for you. Lord have mercy. Meaning the way that you treat people will give you a break. The way that you respond to people will get you a break. The way that you talk to people and pray for people, will allow God to give you a break. 
Because as long as you maintain the right attitude in this season, God will allow you to break away and break into what he has already prepared for you in this season. Lord have mercy. So who needs a break today? Who out there right now is looking for a break? You've been wondering why you couldn't catch a break. And it's been all wrapped up in your attitude. You've been wondering why you couldn't get the things that God was trying to present to you. And you've been praying and fasting for it. It's all wrapped up in your attitude. God told me to tell you today, until you change your attitude, it's going to affect your altitude. Lord have mercy. And the break that you're looking for, it is all wrapped up in your attitude. And once you get your attitude right, God says, then I will allow you to break in to what I had in store for you all along the way. So I pray that someone right now catch a break this morning. Someone right now been going through some tough times, some difficulties, and you've been trying to catch a break. You've been getting angry, you've been getting upset with certain people because things weren't going your way. You've been having an attitude with certain people because things just don't seem to go right. And you've been seeing everybody else get blessed and you got an attitude with them getting blessed. But God says, when you change your attitude, Lord have mercy. He says, then you will catch a break. But until then, things will continue to be wiped out in your life. All the stuff that you keep working for will be taken away. All the people that you know will be moved away. All the stuff that you want that are intimate to you will be separated from you. Because you're trying to catch a break. And God says, my purpose is far greater than what you're living. So I pray that this word bless someone and it falls on your ear this morning. And as I pray right now, I want to pray for you to catch a break. I want to pray for those right now. If you have opportunity, I want you to go ahead and just say, I need a break in the timeline. God, I need to catch a break this morning. I've been pushing, I've been praying, I've been fasting, and I need to catch a break. And God, I submit to you right now to change my attitude so that I can receive my break, my double portion this morning. So Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We pray for those who submit to you right now, God, who's going through their Job experience, that they seem as though they can't catch a break. And every time they get news, it's always bad news. And soon as that bad news is delivered, another set of bad news is on the way. But God, we pray right now in this season that we don't blame you for anything. That we know that there are some things that happen in the actual divine, in the kingdom that we're unaware of. But you are preparing us for greater. So God, we're willing to walk into our purpose to get to our double portion. We're willing to pray, God, for those who falsely accuse us. We're willing to pray for those who we have issues with God in this season so that we can embark into our breakthrough season, God. God, we want to catch a break in this season, God. A break of a double portion for everyone right now who's submitting their attitude to the point of having the attitude of Christ. And as we submit our minds to have a mind of Christ this morning, God, and as we continue to move in this season, God, I pray that you deliver your people, God, and you carry them and give them the break that they so hardly desire. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, E.I., uh, we thank you for your attendance. We thank you for your time. And as there's someone right now who's looking for a Savior, who needs a break, a break from that world, to come into the kingdom. The Bible says in the book of Romans 10 and 9, you confess your mouth, and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and God raised you from the dead, you are saved. That is the break that you need. That is the break that will give you the air to the keys to the kingdom. That is the break that you will walk around in prosperity. That is the break that will give you a life that is more abundantly. That is the break that you're looking for. When you give your life to Christ, 
you've gotten the greatest break that you could ever receive. If this word bless you this morning, and it's, 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 it's ministering to your spirit, and you want to plant a seed, or you want to give an offering, I ask that you sow this morning $10, $10 to catch a break. I pray that you, you sow $10 this morning to catch a break. God, I want my devil portion, so I'm going to trust you in sowing this $10 to catch a break. I want to go ahead and catch a break in this season, God. And I want to hold you to your word so that I can embark into something greater for me. So if you go ahead as our information come up and you sow a seed for catching a break, that's what you put on our cash app or PayPal, or you can mail it in. Say, God, I received this word and I'm claiming my break in this season. So EI, we thank you for your attendance. We thank you for your time. And we pray that you continue to go ahead and tune in as we will be in person next Sunday. We pray that you come in for the physical experience of in-person service because we believe that God is moving us back to some form of normalcy. We will continue to go ahead and give virtual also, but we want to see you physically here as we prepare for the actual Thanksgiving giveaway. So, me and First Lady, we love you. We thank you for your time and your attendance, and we pray that we will see you very soon. Share this word. God bless you until we see you again.